We are pastors Derek and Hilary Walker of the Oxford Bible Church, and we want to share together some principles of prayer that will transform your prayer life and help you live in the presence of God every day. You know, prayer is like breathing. And uh, just like breathing in the natural, we have to do it continually and, and receive uh, the, the good oxygen in the air. And uh, so prayer is like that for our spiritual life. And you know, if we stop breathing or if we don't breathe properly, what's going to happen actually is things in our body just start shutting down and we start to die. And so it is with prayer. If, we, if we're not learning how to pray properly and to breathe in the presence of God, then our spiritual life will start dying and start withering. It won't be like it ought to be. But you know, there's so much in the Bible about prayer. Where can we start? Who, who can we uh, turn to, as it were? What do you think? Who can we turn to, to, to you know, to yeah. learn how to pray? Oh, the best person is Jesus because right. his disciples watched him when he prayed. They saw the signs and the wonders and the miracles. They saw that um, the life of Jesus just literally flowed out of his oh. time of prayer, which is communion with God. Um, and Jesus said that uh, I only do what I see my father right. do and I only say what I hear my father say. Um, and so whole of Jesus's ministry came out of his time of, of prayer. Um, you know, let, let's have a look at Luke 11, um, chapter 11, verses, well, actually 1 to 4. Uh, if I can, I'd like to read this, yeah, actually. Go ahead, yeah. Now, it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. You know, that's what you prayer think? is so familiar, isn't it? Yes. And yet, there are such depths in that mm. prayer, and it, it strikes me that we don't we, we we can toss it aside. We've learnt it as a child, and we think, it, oh well, it doesn't. That's baby Christianity, yeah. you know. Yeah, the Lord's Prayer. Mm. But actually, I think what often we don't realise is that this is actually Jesus's model for prayer. This is presumably how he prayed himself, and his disciples yeah. wanted you know, to mm. be able to pray like Jesus did. So he gave them this pattern. It's not really a prayer to say by rote, mm. um, as we'll see in a bit, but yeah. it's actually a pattern for prayer that he gives us. And yes. I think it's really his first teaching because it's in the Sermon of the Mount. So it's his, it's his first teaching on prayer. It's his foundational teaching on mm. prayer. And so for that reason, we really need to give it serious attention mm. because there are such depths in the Lord's Prayer actually that it actually what I've come to see is that it's yes. the foundation for all the other teaching in the Bible on prayer like whether it's the Apostle Paul or others yes and so if we want to really start at the right place I think we need to look at the Lord's Prayer um, you know it's so profound actually I think we're going to yes. take a few a few goes a few programs <laughs> you know, to I explore so. the riches uh, you know I of the lord's amazing. prayer yes but you know one one problem is i think that that the lord's prayer is and maybe the lord's prayer is very familiar to you i know that's the one thing i learned as a child mm. i think they are probably the only thing was the lord's prayer and i thank god for that but i just said it by rote uh, and had no idea of the riches that it contained and that can be a problem we're so familiar we can assume we know all about it but I don't I think very few really understand the Lord's Prayer but you know I had a problem when I was a young Christian mm. um, a lady who was a, a much older Christian th than I was uh, she had said to me, no, we don't pray the Lord's Prayer because um, that was before the cross. Oh, yes. um, and sadly, that actually took the Lord's Prayer right out of, uh, of, of my prayer life. Uh, and I feel really sad now mm. looking at the depth of, of the Lord's Prayer because um, to say that uh, we, we don't do that anymore, we don't take any notice of it. Mm. This is actually Jesus's words. This is what he told us. 
what he told us to do. Um, and to say that it doesn't count because it's before the cross. You know, the, the apostles, it's apostolic teaching. That's um, it, because yeah. often people might say, well, look, it's the teaching of the apostles we need. Yes, that, yes, you they know, do. That, not yeah. that before the mm. cross, you know, that was for mm. the Jews or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. You're quite right. What so, would you say to that? Well, I was going to say that um, the apostolic teaching um, uh, is in the Gospels. They, they, I mean, they wrote the, they, the, the, the apostles the, wrote the Gospels. Absolutely. They, they wrote the Gospels. Yeah. So how can we just say, uh, <laughs> we're finished, we're, you know, we're done with that. That's it. Um, and uh, Jesus said at the end that, um, that we were to teach people all things that he had taught us. What the, Matthew sorry, 28. Yeah, Go into it. all the world yeah. and make disciples mm. of all nations. Yes. And it said, baptizing them in the mm. name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. And then he said, and, and really he mm. says that to all of us, go make disciples, baptizing them, and then teaching them. Yes. Now, what curriculum are we to teach them? What curriculum are, are we under as mm. his disciples? It says, teaching them to observe everything that the Apostle Paul taught them. No. <laughs> That's part of it. But he actually said, teach them to observe all that I have commanded you to do. Uh, so in other words, what Jesus commanded his apostles that is recorded in the Gospels is for us today. And he says, I'll be with you to the end of the age. So that applies at least till the end of this, this church age. And, and so the apostle Paul and the other great apostles, they actually built on the foundation of Jesus's teaching. You know, I, I was thinking that just before he went in John chapters 14 to 16, mm. Jesus gave, told them what's going to happen. He says, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will bring all things back to your remembrance. And that's all that he taught in the Gospels, because they were to write that down. Yeah. Um, it would have been amazing if Jesus would have written a book himself, but um, uh, probably he didn't because... If he did, we probably wouldn't read any other book. We would just read his book. But, um, and then, so that's the Gospels. And then he yes. says, he will lead you on into all truth. Yes. So that's the, you know, the epistles mostly. Mm -hmm. And then he says, I'll show you, and the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Revelation. That's the book of Revelation. Yes. So there's the whole yes. house, you see. The, mm. the, the foundation is the Gospels. The, the rooms, as it were, is the epistles. And then the roof of the house. Mm. that closed it off is, is the book of Revelation. So yeah. we, if we don't have the foundation, nothing else is going to be right. We need to start with the a, with a teaching of Jesus. Yes. And, um, you know, I believe this is, this is very important. Je it's true that it was t given before the cross. Yes. But I, I often find that, that um, teachers that uh, say, dismiss the Lord's Prayer like that, um, They'll certainly teach from other passages in the Gospels as if it's the word of God for us today. Yes. So they're, they're not really consistent with that. Mm. And, um, and the thing is, yes, it's true that Jesus was a Jew and he lived under the law and he was constrained by it. He kept the law as an observant Jew, the law of Moses. And of course, by the cross, he, as it were, satisfied the demands of the law and we're certainly not under the law of Moses mm. today but we are under the law of Christ we're under the new covenant and we're under his commandments and so it's interesting that although he lived under the law in his teaching he was actually laying down the foundation for the new testament so his teaching is not old testament teaching it's new testament teaching and and, I'm th and there's one verse that's very strong about this in, what, in 2 John 1, 9 yes. that uh, really I came across recently, that actually mm -hmm. the, the teaching of Jesus, what is it? It's the doctrine of Christ. Yes, and um, 2, 2 John 1, 9 mm -hmm. says, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ ah, yes. does not have God. Hmm. It's strong. <laughs> he who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Well, how can we say? I know the doctrine of Christ really is the whole New Testament. Yes. But how can we say that the teaching of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is not included in the doctrine of Christ? I think that would be hmm. foolish <laughs> to, to say that. So we need to realize the Lord's Prayer is for us today. Don't let anyone steal that from you. This is the pattern of prayer that Jesus gave each one of us today. And we're going to see a lot of things flow out of that understanding. Uh, 
In fact, the, the, it's, it's, it's a grace prayer. It's a, it reflects New Testament grace. It's very radical, even in the very first line. You know, the first line, our Father. You know, we're so used to hearing that. Aren't we just? But that, that was radical, you know, because... Of course it was, wasn't it? You know, the Jews, they didn't understand that close relationship oh. that for us, we understand that now, because mm. it's only through the cross, through the blood yes. of Jesus, yes. through receiving Jesus and being born again, we became children of God. God is our Father. He's not just God. He's not just Father of all mankind. He's my Father. Yeah. You know that? We've been brought into the family of God. That's New Testament Christianity. That's not Old Testament Christianity. And that was very radical when Jesus said, Our Father. He yes. was actually giving us the prayer that He lived in that reality, yes, mm. because He had the Holy Spirit in Him. He was the Son of God. But for but for the others, really, we could only come into that reality in the New Testament. So yeah. it, it reminds me of um, what Jesus said to Martha on the day of the resurrection, yeah? Oh, yes. The, um, you know, I'm ascending, he yes. said, to my Father. I think it's in John 20, 17. He says, um, what, what is it? Was it to Mary? He said it to... Um, um, he said, don't cling to me. That's right. Because to I'm Mary not, Madeline. That's I'm it, sorry, Mary Madeline. Mary Madeline. I am ascending to my father, yes, and, which they said, fine, yes. we understand God's the, his mm -hmm. father, but it's not just my father and your father. See, now that the blood had been shed, now that he rose from yes. the dead, yes. God was not just his father, but he was our father. And he says, and to my God and your God. And that's the New Testament reality. Yes. And that's how the Lord's Prayer begins. So... You know, we, yeah. we, need to, we need to be clear on that. <laughs> I hadn't realised how radical it was. Yeah. Because for them it would almost be heretical to say, Yeah. My father. It's presumptuous. When we realise what the cross has done. Yeah, it's changed everything. And here Jesus is saying it actually before yes. he went to the cross. You see, because his teaching mm. anticipated yes. what he would do. He was laying the foundation. You know, so that proves and, uh, that's you know, when today. Yes. at the end of the Sermon of the Mount, mm. actually, he he talked about mm. building on the rock, a man who builds his house on the rock. Yes. And uh, uh, the storm comes, you know, and it won't be blown yes. down. He says, what is the rock is his sayings. Whoever hears my sayings and does them, he's the one that builds on the rock. So the oh, sayings yes. of Jesus, particularly in the Sermon of the Mount. Yes. Is the rock. Yeah. Foundation on which we need to build our life of prayer. And so, really? you know, we, when we talk about our Father, that immediately tells us that the foundation of our prayer life needs to be the grace of God. And Je Jesus actually emphasizes this. Our prayer, our approaching God is based on grace. This mm -hmm. is the new covenant truth. Prayer is our response to his amazing grace. It's, it's not trying to get points with God. It's not trying to twist his arm. Um, you know, as breathing, you see, is, is our natural response to the air that's around us. So prayer is our response to the wonderful grace of God, the love of God that surrounds us through Jesus. And so we, in prayer, we breathe in. We breathe in his love and then we breathe it out. We, we express our love to God and, and for people. By praying for people, it's it's like breathing in the air, and so we we prayer is a is a lifestyle. It's a continual thing. Uh, but and Jesus says this: if our prayer is not based on the grace of God, then people are just speaking words to no avail. It's mm -hmm. just in the flesh, and actually, it's our heart attitude in prayer that's the key. That our heart is adjusted to the grace of God, and we're we're in that place of prayer where we're praying out in response to the grace of God. And, you know, I think Jesus well, he emphasized that. that you know. He did. I mean, in, in the account that, that Matthew gives, uh, actually that's Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, mm. uh, for they love to stand um, as in the synagogues and on the corners of the street, so that they may be seen of men. And Jesus said, surely they have their reward right there and then. Mm. But Jesus said, but you, when you pray, you go into your room, into your private room, and when you shut your door, you pray to your father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. 
And he said, you know, when you pray, don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they're going to be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask. Um, in this manner, um, presumably pattern, therefore Jesus tells them to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed. In this manner, you see. In this manner, now, yes. That shows that mm. it's... Th He's setting out a pattern. Yes. Uh, and we'll be talking about that because yes. there's a lot of consequences of that pattern. Yes. But, um, you know, it's interesting, he says, it's the, the place that you're in, really in your heart, mm. is crucial to your praying. He describes yes. two different kinds of people mm. that are praying, praying out of the wrong place. Yes, he does. The, yeah. the, fa the Pharisee, the, the proud man, the self-righteous yes. man, praying out of that pride. Mm. And, of course, his prayers are wasted words. Yes. And there's another man who's, who's praying, which he talks about the heathen, yeah. praying out yes. of a place of, um, well, trying to get God's attention, you know, separated from God and somehow trying to impress God yes. with his ritual, with, with saying an, a lot of words. And yet Jesus said, you need to get into a place. He calls it the secret place. It's a secret place. It's a special place. Yes. And it's actually the place of grace. It's the place in God's presence, mm -hmm. under the shadow of his wings. Yes. You know, that place where we just enter into, where we know that God loves us. And that's really our yes. Father in heaven is moving into that secret place. Mm. Lord, you're my Father. You love me. I'm your child. Yes. I'm not here to try and, you know, yes. twist your arm. I'm, I'm not here trying to earn my place with you, with my works. I'm just coming into that secret place, into that place in the spirit that you love me. And then we pray out from that. Yeah. So other people's prayers were un ineffective, he says. They're, they're praying mm. from their flesh because yes. their heart is not positioned in the grace of God. Mm. You know, the self-righteous person. Yeah. He says they're just... He, he thinks he's superior. He thinks God's, he's got automatically got, got God's ear because oh, well, he's such God. a good... Yes good person mm. and he feels superior and he likes to show off because everyone else around them is scum in comparison so yeah, he's self-righteous and so he's yeah. praying out of that pride yeah and somehow he thinks he's better than the people around them mm. uh, he's showing off mm. and jesus says you know in fact there's a parable where it says a man praying like that yes i'm glad i'm not like this sinner next to me <laughs> yes it, jesus said actually he was praying to himself you know, he wasn't oh. praying to God. God wasn't even thinking that it's a prayer because it's just, he's just yeah. extolling himself. So, uh, you know, I'm sure none of our listeners are like that. I'm sure, I'm sure you're not. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> if we have a revelation, you know, yes. of God's grace, we can't be like that. No, you, we, we really can't because, as you say, we need a revelation of um, our place in, in, in God's grace. One of my, I've got lots of favorite scriptures, um, it, bear with me, can I, can I just read it? Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, because this is so personal to me. Mm. Um, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Mm. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any should boast. Yeah. Um, and I realize that there is... I absolutely deserve nothing from God of myself. <laughs> so one's in that place of receiving through Jesus Christ. It's only alone. because of his blood. I mean, yes. if you just understand what, mm. without the blood of Jesus, none of us, I don't care how yes. clever we are, how good we are, how religious we are, yes. none of us would have a chance to, because God's standard is perfection. Yes. And, you know, if we're honest, mm. we know we, we were sinners. Yeah. We did not deserve it. Absolutely but it's not. only because of his blood and mm. his righteousness. Yes. So once you've got that revelation of his grace, yes. that's how you enter into that, into your prayer. Mm. Because otherwise it's, it's you maybe out of your pride. And then perhaps more commonly, we can pray like the heathen, even, even Christians, I think, can, oh. can, if we don't get the revelation of God's grace, yes. we can be like the heathen. He yes. says, don't be like them, mm. using vain repetitions like the heathen. They think mm. because of their many words, God yes. will hear them. Don't be like them, he says, because mm. your father. Yes. He says, the trouble with the heathen is they don't have a covenant with God. Mm. They, they, they know God is a long way away from them. 
Yes. And uh, or a Christian who really does not understand the grace of God. It's like God's a long way away and I've got to somehow impress him that I've done. A, I've prayed a, enough today that he will do that or ritualistic prayers, praying by rote that if I maybe if I pray five times a day, uh, God will be suitably impressed and, and he'll send a, a bit of blessing my way. This kind of mentality is the mentality of the heathen, that I've got to do something to earn God's favor. Yes. And that's why I've got to pray it. It's, yes. it's like that, that uh, attitude. And so Jesus said, if you're not playing, praying from that place of grace, mm. where you know that he's your father, yes. he loves you already. He knows everything you, you yes. have need of. Yeah. And he wants to give that to you. And, and you come in, you pray, the Lord's Prayer starts not with lots of requests, mm. but with coming into God's presence. Our Father who art in heaven. Yes. Lord, you're my Father. Yes. I'm your child. I'm under your grace. And, and that's how it starts. Because God actually, he's got all these blessings that he wants to pour out on mm. us. You know, you've just reminded me of a wonderful time when I was in um, our children's church. And this lovely little girl called Izzy, uh, one of the children was um, sick, actually, wasn't feeling very well. And I asked her to pray for this little mm. one. Now, at that time, I mean, Izzy's grown up now and, and she's a beautiful young lady. But at that time, she stuttered and she found it very difficult, actually, to speak in front of anybody except her family. And I remember she prayed very quietly and she stuttered her way through asking God to heal this little girl. But do you know, the presence of God came down. I've never experienced anything like it before. Mm. There was this very faint stuttery prayer for this little girl who was sitting right next to her. And you just felt that the presence of God, the power of God, and that child was healed. Mm. And yet I've heard some beautiful prayers, long, yeah. long, long, long ones. Yes. Not a lot's happened, <laughs> but Izzy's prayer has taught me a lot. Yes. It doesn't, actually. God already knows. He knows so already. sometimes yes. prayer can be sanctified worry, you know, <laughs> relating all my problems. But actually, God yes. knows it all. Yes. But if we come into that place of grace, we can mm. we can pray effectively. You, yes. you know, do you remember when we were in America, or we mm. we saw this play, uh, and that was oh. I know that affected you deeply, didn't it? Oh, it did. This is when we were in Phoenix, Arizona, mm. and we'd been invited down to a pastor's forum, and they were very good. They they let us plug into all the different ministries. But um, for me, the piece de resistance, the final thing was, uh, it was called the trial of Pastor um, Tommy Barnett. And I thought, what on earth are they going to do? And so Pastor um, Tommy Barnett uh, took the place of someone standing before God. Um, and, you know, various people came forward and said what a good man he was. He, the, uh, Pastor Tommy was, was on trial for his, his, his eternal life and people said how good he was, you know, various people who died and they were standing before God and they were saying, this is a good man, he's, he's, he, did, he did this, he did that, he did the children's program, etc, etc. Um, and no, it didn't make, to no avail. Uh, and then an angel came, comes shooting from, actually I don't know where they got this guy, but anyway, they <laughs> shot him down onto the stage and he was an angel and he stood and, you know, the angel gave testimony that Tommy Barnett had done so much good. He'd raised all this money, still nothing. He was still condemned. And so actually it brings tears to my eyes when I still think of it. And then this beautiful figure of Jesus came on and he put his arm around him and he said, Father, I shed my blood for him. Mm. Um, and we couldn't see God because they got all this mist. And you heard the gavel come down and he said, not guilty. Mm. And the place erupted. Mm. And I remember actually 300 people came pouring forward to give their mm. hearts to Jesus. Yeah. Very powerful. So that's the, that's the grace of God. Mm. You know, we didn't deserve anything from God. And, uh, you know, we're not going to impress God with our many words or going through certain ritual prayers. That's not what it's about. It's, it's understanding the grace of God. That's where it begins, that we're his child. Our Father who art in heaven, we're his child. We're under his grace. And the grace of God, you know, Jesus stepped forward for us and he shed his blood for us. And we stood before that judge and we were guilty and we deserved destruction. But Jesus stepped, stepped forward and Based on his blood, the judge declared us not guilty, forgiven. But you know, if it was just that, 
But it's much more. Because more than that, because he didn't just take our sin, but he gave us his righteousness. And we now have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And we stand before the judge with the righteousness of Jesus. And the judge also made a declaration saying, you are righteous. And the word for that is justified. We were justified, given the righteousness of Jesus Christ himself. That's essential for our prayer life, that when we enter into the presence of God as the righteousness of God himself, with the righteousness of Jesus, that's the place we pray from. And it's better than that, because the judge then got off his chair and hugged us and says, more than that, I'm going to adopt you as my child. I, and he actually regenerated us. We are the child of God. Praise God, and we're in the family of God. And that's the place of prayer that we need to start from. We are in his presence. Come to God today and realize you're his child. He loves you. He's forgiven all your sins, past, present, future. You're righteous in his sight through Jesus. Come to him as his beloved child, accepted, and let your prayer flow out of that wonderful grace.